Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. We're building a calculator, folks. This is part two of my Let's Build a Calculator series. In part one, we got all the basics down. So if you haven't watched part one yet, then here it is. You'll find a link down below. Go click on it. Go watch part one because part two is going to be kind of senseless if you don't watch part one. That's kind of how parts work, right? Okay, here we go. So in part one, we got the basics of the calculator built. We got our little buttons built, right? Our add, our subtract, our multiply, our divide, our equals, right? Clear, parentheses, all that stuff. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, and we did this with a minimal amount of programming. See, you don't have to write a ton of code as long as you write good code, right? And all of our code, it basically so far, is just that, right? We've got um, our add to calc function which is in most of the buttons as an event right there, right? Add to calc, right? It's right, right smarter, not a lot longer, <laughs> Okay, add to calc adds the data up into here. We've got our clear button. We've got the evaluate button. We got the equals button, which literally just uses the eval function. That's it, that's three lines of code so far for this entire project. That's not too bad. Today, we're gonna focus on making this thing a little bit smarter with a little error handling. All right, for example, if I type in 56, minus dot, 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 and press enter, bam, right? The expression already contains invalid syntax. If I hit debug, it takes me to this line. Eval by itself is just gonna throw a fit if you send it something that's not a valid mathematical function, all right, or that it can't evaluate, all right? So we're gonna add a little error handling to this. Now, if you wanna leg up first, then go watch my video on error handling. It covers a lot more detail. I'm gonna go over the basics right now, but if you want to learn more about error handling, go watch this video. So the easiest way to get around an error, okay, is on error resume next. And this works okay in some situations, but basically it says, hey, if you encounter an error, just ignore it and just move on to the next line. That's what on error resume next means, all right? And if I save that and come back out here and do the same thing, hit equals, nothing happens, all right, which isn't extremely user-friendly, okay? So instead of that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if you encounter an error, I want you to put the word error in here, like that, error, all right? That way the user knows, or maybe even beep. I don't know, it's up to you. That's what most calculators do, right? If you type in some garbage, it gives you error. Mm -hmm. So instead of on error, resume next, all right? We're gonna say on error, go to, and then some label that we're gonna create. We'll call it my error. All right, not Mr. Error. It's not Mr. Fusion or Mr. Coffee. My Error or My Error or X or whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter. This basically says when you encounter an error, go to a spot called My Error. Where's that? We're going to make it right now, right down here. My Error. Come on, I can't type today. My Error colon. Put a colon after it. That's a label. All right, that's a labeled location in your subroutine. Right, back in the old days, we could line number stuff like 10, do this, 20, do that, 30, do that. And Visual Basic, we can put little labels there to indicate spots to jump to in the code. And this is the preferred way to handle any errors, okay? So if you encounter an error, what are we gonna do? I wanna put the word error up in the calc box. All right, so calc equals error, like that. Maybe beep, okay? And then what we have to do is when you're done handling the error, you have to continue. You have to resume somehow, resume where you were. So resume, next, and then up here, the next thing after that line is just going to be simply exit sub. Okay? Yeah, you don't necessarily technically need that resume next down here. It'll drop out of the sub, but I've found that in the past it causes problems if you don't resume out of an error handling loop. Just trust me. Okay. You can also resume to another labeled location. So if you got other stuff that you wanted to go on in here, you could put another like, you know, my resume, and then you could resume to that location there. I cover error handling in a lot more detail in my advanced classes. Okay. And if an error is not encountered here, you still want to exit sub at this point, because if not, it'll continue down to here and give you the error, right? So basically this line gets evaluated, if there is an error, it jumps down here, puts the error in the, in the window, beeps, resumes next, which exits sub. If there is no error, then 
it evaluates and then exits the sub. See that? I know, I know. If you're new to this, it's a little weird, but that's just how you got to do it. So now if I come over here, let me clear this, right? If I put in five minus two, enter, everything's good. If I put three, star, 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 dot, 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 right parentheses, enter, I get the error and the beep. See? That's pretty straightforward, right? Now, at this point, our other buttons need to know about that error because if I hit nine and you want to continue doing stuff now, it's just adding on to the end. So we need to make it so that our function that adds stuff up here looks to see if there's an error in the window. Okay, if there's an error there, we need to clear it and continue on. To do this, we're going to use an if then statement. All right, if something happens, then do something else. We want to learn more about if then go watch this video. Okay. So what is the code that puts stuff up here? Well, let's go back to our code editor. It's this guy, right? The add to calc. Okay. So right here, we're going to check and see if that window says error. And we're going to say if calc equals error, just like that, then calc equals null, basically blanket. Not blanket like you're going to wear a blanket because you're cold like blank it, right? <laughs> All right, save it once in a while. Give yourself a debug compile just to make sure, All right? Debug compile, where'd you go? Debug compile right there. Okay. Everything's good. No compile errors. So now that says error. All right, if I press five, it erases it and continues on. Five times three divided by 0 0.05, enter. Okay, minus five. Equals, okay, good. Minus, 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 plus, 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 plus. Error. All right, okay, okay. Zero, two, five, okay, see, we're good. Now it knows how to handle that error. Want to get fancy? Want to add a little color maybe? Watch this, come back out here. All right. If we encounter an error, we're going to say calc dot back color equals VB red. All right, and when we're clearing it up here, we're going to say then. Now we need two statements to go for this then. All right. Calc equals null. And then calc dot back color equals VB white. And if. If you got a multiple line if statement, you need the end if on the end there. And I covered that in the if then video. All right. So if we got an error, we're going to beep and turn red. And then the next action will reset that basically. And we might want to put that in our clear too, right? In fact, what we could do, since I've got these two commands I want to repeat twice, okay? We can make another custom function to clear the calculator box. So let's make this private. This can be a subroutine, clear calc, okay? And clear calc is going to say this, copy this, put it here. Okay, so that's clear calc now. And then clear calc can go here. And now we don't need all these statements here either. We can go back to just one thing and that one thing will be clear calc. See, we don't wanna have duplicate code in multiple places. As soon as it gets to two, three, four lines, you wanna make it its own subroutine or its own function if it's returning a value. Or in this case, this isn't returning a value, it's being used in an event handler, okay? All right, so that's what clear calc does. So now let's save it, save it, control S, come back out here, times three point divided equals, oh, that's an error, goes red. All right, fine, continue on, two, five, see, it cleared it, point three, clear, okay, three minus minus plus, all right, fine. Okay, how's that? That's pretty cool, huh? Want to learn more about playing with colors in Access VBA? Go watch this video. There's actually a function called RGB that you can use to get the exact color that you want. There are some constants for some colors that are used a lot, like VB white, VB blue, VB green, VB red. But if you want a shade of green, use the RGB function. Now, what I'm going to do so you guys don't get confused is every class, I'm going to slightly change the background color of this guy so that for the next screen cap, it's a little bit different. So let's make, let's go to green now. Yeah, let's go to green. That looks good. Nope, nope, nope. Let's go back to that one.
go there. Oh, looks good. Let's make this guy dark. There we go. Okay, so now the next class, the screenshot will look like that. It'll look a little different. We'll put an error in there, too. <laughs> How's that look? Okay. All right, so there you go. There's your error handling. That's part two. Yeah, I know. I should probably update this. Just, we're good. It's, it'll be the one from the last class. You understand, right? I <laughs> uh, hope you learned something. I hope error handling was fun. I cover error handling in a lot more detail in that video that I pointed you to earlier, my error handling video. I also cover it in my Access Developer 2 and 15 class. That's where we go into like detail on how to handle error handling. But this video will give you the, more of the basics. All right, hope you're enjoying the calculator. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, 
there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.